Okay, we are live. All right, so. Okay. All right, so I'll continue on yesterday's portrait. So yesterday I did the drawing portion, which is a difficult part. I'm not saying the painting is not difficult at all, but it is, for me, it is relatively a little bit less stress because I figured out the proportion and all the likeness and everything. So it should be fine. So for this one, I will be showing you my palette and my paper and such, and the reference should still be over there. So you should be able to see her. All right. So can you paint a cruise ship in watercolor? Um, I, I had a painting that has a cruise ship in the background. Maybe one day I'll paint a cruise ship as a main subject, but all right, anyways. All right, so let me take a look at this painting real quick and I think I'll just erase some of the darker pencil mark, make it as clean as possible to be ready for watercolor. Like some of the line I can barely see. Uh, one person emailed me yesterday saying that I can see your drawing that well. Um, that's kind of the point when I starting to do the drawing, I just get the feel of the, get the feel of the, the form, the things that I'm drawing. So it's not going to be very visible. I can see a little bit of landmark here and there, and that should be good enough. All right, so. This is my portrait palette. I have a different palette when it comes to portrait and scenery. And the reason is that for portrait, I need a lot cleaner palette to work with. Okay, I don't want to get the skin looking dirty. So I have a relatively different approach when it comes to portrait and landscape because they are very different subjects. All right, let's get to the first wash of the skin. So cadmium red, cadmium orange, maybe a little touch of cadmium yellow. Okay. All right, so. We teach clouds in watercolor like sunset that cost me. I am not quite sure what do you mean by that. Like you want me to paint sunset in watercolor? Is that what you mean? I'm not quite sure. All right, so let me look at this first. So obviously we need to figure out what's the lightest part of her face. Now her face is very well lit. She probably have like a spotlight going down here. Actually they have a very nice butterfly lighting. So butterfly lighting also known as Paramount lighting is what Paramount Studio light their main actress. So it has like an also have a name of building lighting. So there's like a sh little bit of shadow looks like a butterfly under her nose. And everything else is very well lit. Very little shadow on, you know, besides the underneath here. So that's why it looks very pretty. And I think for her, that's a well fit. So obviously the light is kind of from top down. So the forehead and their nose and the top of the cheekbone is catches most of the light. So we need to keep that in mind. Let me do a quick test. Okay. Yeah, I want to keep this portrait relatively light, so I don't want to go over it too much. This, I think this is, yeah, I think this value looks great. I'll just keep it that way. So I'll, I'm thinking to just have a portrait that's mostly so I'm not gonna go too crazy on the color for this one. I want just to keep the nice contrast. Now the face is probably like the lightest part in this painting, so I am not going to 
be afraid to paint it outside of her face because everything else will be likely covered. So I'm pretty much just wetting all of the face, okay, everything, all of the face. Now this can add a little bit of carmine. It's a beautiful blush color. So right now I'm just kind of doing some wet on wet work. Karma is such a strong color. It's a very beautiful color, but it's a very strong color. Hi, Mayna. It's good to see you here. I, I think YouTube somehow changed the life link for some reason, so it... I need to figure out how that how that works. This is kind of a weird thing that they do that. So a little bit of karma on the bridge of the nose. Okay, keep in mind, this is the first wash. I'm not trying to do a lot of the shadow here. Okay. I think I can have a little bit of cerulean blue. Maybe over here. Like, I don't want to go too crazy on the color, but a little bit of warm and cool. I think that can do us good. Oh, okay, I need I need to finish this part. I don't want this part to, to dry. Okay. What we want in the first wash is a nice clean wash, okay? And it's fine. I can paint on the, on the close part. It's totally fine because it's... The clothes is gonna be almost completely black, so I am not afraid to, to do that. I think some of the part I can make it a little bit lighter. I am using this is like a Chinese brand called Bao Hong. Um, I got it from the internet, obviously. It's pretty hard to come across in the US, but it has a very nice property, especially when it comes to painting something that I need a little bit more time to work on. It dry a lot uh, slower than Sonder. It's very similar to, to Arches, actually, but I find Arches kind of stinky when you start to wetting it. And then Arches is, a, is very rough. Yeah, this video will be will be available. It'll be recorded by YouTube. So, all right. So, okay. So while that is still getting dry, I'm going to maybe just starting to paint a little bit of the clothes. Let me see. Yeah. All right. So this, you know, the way to check if it is dry, first you try to see if there's reflection on it. Okay, if not, then you can try to feel the paper, like very lightly touch on it. If it's colder than the rest of the paper, that means there's still some moisture in it. So there's a risk to going back into it right now. Okay. But I think I can... Yeah, this this part you can I can definitely this part I can definitely paint something dark and and dry. So let me see if I can yeah get just get a little bit of dark in here just while we wait. I put a little bit of masking fluid here and there, which is something I don't usually do, but... Okay. Okay, some cerulean blue cool this off. Okay. I'm just gonna soften this it off like this is just kind of give me a reference how dark things can go it can go a lot darker actually but I think we'll just kind of have that right now okay 
okay yeah beautiful color so again i can't emphasize enough okay the first wash is keep it as clean as possible i and you're gonna notice that i don't take a small brush and doing a bunch of these i don't blend color like that so that's very very important okay i think this is dry enough i'm gonna start painting her face um i actually don't know if i will able to finish the whole painting in this in this stream i'll but i'll definitely finish the majority of it so that you guys can get a pretty good idea so burn umber um okay burn umber i'll mix in the cool pile burn umber was a little bit of red um a tiny touch of the blue color just to make it a little bit darker this will be the second wash. I'll try to keep the wash as little as possible to give her a nice clean face. All right, let me see if I can zoom it in a little bit. All right. Yeah, I'll try to zoom it in so you can see a little bit better. I'll start with the eyes. And, uh, you know, different people have different ways to approach this. Okay, my way of approaching is to start with the eyes. So just very lightly doing that. Okay, I think that's dark enough for now. Okay. Just kind of build up very slowly now was almost dry brush see I'm drying my brush with on the rag almost dry brush I'm gonna soften this see that I soften it and then let me grab some of this red color one of the thing that like this is too wet need to add some more pigments red some orange i'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna okay one of the thing that a lot of people when it comes to painting portrait the mistake they make they start to use a lot of dirt color that's not a good idea don't start to use a lot of umbers just because that's what that's the color that you see okay. it's not a good idea to use umber not excessively anyways because you are going to end up with a lot of dirt on the figure's face okay we will just clean brush and soften kind of merge this two okay okay i've got a little bit of like a brown a mix with the cool pile i'll add a little bit of umber a little bit more I think I'll just use the tip of my brush and start to get some of the eyebrow in. Okay, just the tip of the brush, very gently, very lightly, kind of sculpt that shape. Yeah. Okay. Okay, squeeze out the moisture on the brush, and I'll just soften that. Okay. Okay, come back to it with a little bit of red, adding a little bit of carmide. And now just bring that shape down. Okay, slowly watch the silhouette of the nose. Soften that.
I'm gonna keep her face very light. Okay, I definitely don't want to make like really dark face. Okay, I think this is good enough. I'll, I'll leave it for now and I'll move on to the other eye. So some umber, some red, warm color. Okay, see my color mixtures are very simple. Okay. So start with the corner, and a little stroke here, and a little stroke here. I'm pretty much just lightly, slowly pressing my brush down instead of really trying to draw the line, I'm trying to build up a little shape here. All right, I'm looking at my reference, everything looking good. Just gonna pick up some of the warm colors here. Before this is dry, I want to merge that in. Here we go. Side plane of her eyes. And also I want some warms here. There we have it. Okay, this is why I choose to work on this paper. It makes things a little bit easier. It doesn't dry as fast. I have some time to mix the color. So a little bit of cool color, but I'm rel relatively transparent here. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna glide it across. Let the water connect them. Look at that. Like water is what connects and blend all the colors here in the watercolor. have a little bit of value here. Okay. A little bit of brown, I think. Might need to mix a little bit of the orange into my mixture. It feels a little bit too cold. I'll just connect them. Okay, clean, damp brush, I'll bring this out, actually a little bit more water is fine, Let's bring this out, I'll leave a little bit of hard edge, but the rest of it I'll let it fade, Pays off into that. A little bit of karma, I want to give her a little bit of Blush, but again, Carmine is such a strong color. I need to be careful when using it. But look at that beautiful color here. That's kind of like a rose color. A little bit wet on wet shape here. Okay. I have a completely clean color so that I can try to give it a clean edge there okay so same thing here I'll use the tip of my brush have to make sure relatively dry and get her eyebrow in can everybody hear me all right I'm, nobody's talking so I'm trying to see if everybody can hear me because I also have music playing so it's not gonna sound as dry so let me know if you can all hear me very well. Hmm. Okay, I think I want a little bit of warmth here. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, if you guys are can hear me, that's all that matters. No, you guys can. You guys feel free to talk to me if you want to. I mean, I, I'm not gonna force you guys to talk, but you know, it'd be it'd be it'd be nice if you can have some conversation while I'm painting. It can actually help me relax a little bit. Okay, I'll 
bring this value out a little bit. Okay. Here we got this two eyes there. And I think I'll just uh, actually let me give it a little bit of transition here. A little bit down here, a little bit down here. Okay. The eye the eyelid, the eyelash does have some thickness, so it does cast a little bit of shadow. The thing is the shadows kind of blend in with the eyelashes. Okay, that is why okay, it feels really clean cut, but we want a little bit of tra transition. So the thing about the portrait is a lot of people, they're trying to paint features. They try to make, sh uh, they try to start to drawing lines per se. Okay. The last thing you want for your portrait is make everything feels like a cutout. Everything should belong to the face. Okay, so this is something that I repeat many times. Like if you paint an eye, that eye should belong to the face. Okay, let me... I love portrait. It just is hard to do. <laughs> well, for for people who've been doing it, you know, every every like for for a very long time, it's probably not as hard. But still, portrait is my first love. Actually, when it comes to when it comes to painting and art, and my favorite subject is my wife, and it was my girlfriend. And I remember back in the art school, my teach my one of my instructors like you need to stop painting your girlfriend. You need to change the subject. And I always thought that was the weirdest thing I ever heard because what's the point of being an artist if I cannot paint what I love the most? Right? Who's my girlfriend and now my wife? Anyways, a little side story, but I always been liking the portrait. So I'm trying to merge this all into one shape. So the bottom of her nose and I have it connect to the cast shadow that is casting. Like I have I have a little bit of warm color here and there. Okay. Let me soften this edge a little bit with clean water and I think I'll soften a little bit here as well okay. not everything needs to be very hard I'll keep a few hard edge but I think for the most part for some of the edge let me just loosen it up a little bit so if you look at that we have some soft edge some hard edge but this is one single shape. Okay, this interesting shape. The bottom of the nose to the cast shadow of the nose. And I'll just leave that from now and we can come back in later and kind of fill the nostril in. Okay, let's work on her beautiful lips. All right, so I'll add a little bit more Carmine. So I mix some carmine and some orange to have some warmer version of this blush color. Let me do a test and see how that looks. See, from beginning to end, besides the first wash, this is all I'm using. This one number six Da Vinci brush. This is all I'm using. So a good brush goes a long way. Okay, need a little bit more orange here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna to give it one shape here. Give it another shape here. It's this two. And I will just use clean brush and take those paint out like so. Okay, now. I want to soften this edge a little bit. Let me soften this edge and a little bit of this edge. Why do I soften those? Because I want it to be 
part of the face. I don't want a cutout. I don't want a cutout. Remember, okay? Write it down. <laughs> don't make the features a cutout. Okay, if I have hard edge all over the place, it's feel gonna feel like a cutout. Feel like somebody put a sticker there. And that's the last thing you want for the portrait. You don't want that, right? You want it to belong to the face. At least that's the way I that's the way I do it. Okay. Let me bring a little bit of shadow so I'll put some pigment here. And I'll just Bring that out a little bit. I'm uh, just using my finger too. Okay. All right. So now the bottom lip be the same thing, some carmine, some orange, and I'll just give just the bottom. Here we go. That. Okay, just that. Oops. Okay, I'll soften the edge on the top. Take a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of cerulean blue. Let me put it under here. There we go. So a little bit of dark down here. I'll actually use a little bit of umber, very sparingly. Just gonna. Add a little bit of warmth to it. Wet onto wet. Maybe a little bit of red here as well. Okay. This I want to keep it mostly hard, except this. I'm gonna soften this. All right. Let me zoom it out and see the whole face. Okay, so all I'm doing is bring out the form. That little light here, little light here, okay, adding a little bit of shadow here, you start to see the face coming out. Right, that's all we're doing. We're trying to bring the form out of a two dimensional surface. That's all we're trying to do. I think I mentioned this story before, I think I can share this story again. So, it's a story I heard. So, when Michelangelo is have you know when he's 20 years old because he's a genius he sculpted a pieta out of the marble everybody's fascinating it's like how do you do that how do you do that and he just answered that well it's actually not that hard i just bring the form out from the rock i liberate the form out from the rock and I thought that was a very profound way of thinking this way. But we're essentially doing the same thing. We're trying to bring the form out from a two-dimensional surface, but giving optical illusion. All right, so let me start to give some form of her face. There we go. Okay, slowly. Looks very scary, isn't it? <laughs> okay, but before it's dry, have a clean water and just go that. Actually, a little bit warmer. I'm gonna connect this to the bottom of the 
lip, this corner of the lip, like that. Okay. Group this value together. I think I can experience with it. I'll give it a little bit of cool, yeah, cool tone here. And a little bit of carmine like that. Okay. This is a wonderful paper. Okay, so if you're trying to do a lot of wet on wet work, definitely choose a paper that's not going to dry very fast. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for trouble. Uh, the bottom still start getting dry. That's not good. Okay, and I want to soften this a little bit. And I'll soften that a little bit. Mm. Oops. Okay. Oh. I think I can leave that hard edge. It's fine. Well, this is this. I'm gonna leave a hard edge there, but I'm not worried too much because I can make it darker, just to kind of hide that. Okay, I need to cool it off. It's a little bit too hot. So I'm gonna add some cerulean blue here. Okay, paint over to the hair is fine. Her hair is a lot darker. Okay, I'm just gonna use clean water and just soften this whole thing. Okay, so very nice and soft. Okay. All right, I think we are, I think we're good. Okay, let me define this just a little bit more. I'm giving this a little bit of form here. Okay, give it some soft shadow here. A little soft shading here. All right, let me look at, step back a little bit. Okay, all right. I am going to start to define things a little bit further. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the nose part is dry and I can start to define it a little bit. So, so the nose, <laughs> the nostril, don't fall into the trap, okay? You're looking at the, you're looking at the, um, the reference is very dark, but don't fall into that trap, okay? If you make your nostrils super dark, it's not going to look good, okay? Instead, let me try to zoom it in so you can see. Instead, see where it is? Give it a little bit of shape here. It's just that, okay? It's another nostril here. I'll just give it a tiny bit of form here, okay? And keep it warm, okay? Don't start, oh, okay, this is black. Let me just put it black there. That doesn't look good at all, especially for females. Start to look like, he's, she, like her nose looks dirty. Don't, don't have that. And just like a very clean brush and soften that up. Okay, bring it down a little bit even. Okay, have this going on like that. Okay, just just that. Okay, just a little hint of something inside. That's that's all you have to do. Is don't put something very dark, and draw people's eyes here. Look, it's a really dark hole there. Don't don't do that. Okay, just a little bit of hint, and you do the job. Okay, let's give it a side plane of her nose. Little side plane there. <coughs> okay, clean water and just soften that. And a little bit softened down here. I think a little bit of heart shape there is, is fine. 
Might bring it out a little bit more though. Okay. Yeah, here's here is the part that things start to get a little bit tricky and I need to focus a little bit more. So if I, I'm gonna start talk a little bit less. Okay, a little bit core shadow here. And if I speak very, very soft, that's because I'm mostly speaking to myself. Hope you guys don't mind that. That's why I put music so when I don't speak, you, you, it's not going to be too quiet. Okay, I think. Yeah. Let's, deep, let's deepen her eyelash a little bit more. You guys can still talk though, I'm just because I'm quiet doesn't mean I want everybody to hold their breaths. It's just not, not the purpose here. Okay. Let me add a little bit more form here. Lease needs to be darker. Quiet bunch, you guys. Okay, all right. Now I think. Let me add a few things here. Okay, let me give it a little bit of cool color here. Comes out a little bit strong, but I think it's fine. I want a little bit of color variety here. Okay, I don't want to go too crazy on it, but a little bit of cool color can definitely warm things up. Now, keep in mind, this is completely dry already. Okay, so I don't need to worry about color going out of control here. Now, let's come back in here again with the Carmi. Across the bridge of the nose. Let's just soften this. Okay, let's further, let's darken her lips just a little bit. Okay, we need to darken her lips, okay, especially like here. Be the corner of her mouth and up here. Okay, okay here and here. Notice I don't just paint across and start outlining it. I'll use the water to connect this to shape. I'll soften this a little bit. How are you guys are doing? We have 23 people here right now. Thanks for tuning in. This live stream is so different from the ones that I've ever been to. Like, I, I went to some YouTubers live stream before and everybody just started talking nonstop. My audience are quiet. That's why that's completely okay. 
I enjoy that quite a bit. Okay. Here's a, I think I need to make her lips just a little bit fuller. So I'm just gonna pick up some of the color here. I don't need to mix any more new colors for that. I'm just gonna. Makes her lips a little bit fuller. Okay. As I darken it even more, you see the light even better. So, immediately I think this, this specific portrait will work better if I'm painting in oil because I can just paint the light on it. And for this, I need to paint the light away. So it's a little bit of challenge. But still, I, I only have watercolor and that's something that I'm committed to do. So there we have it. All right. Oh, I like your dog. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's take a little bit of break from from little detail work and just grab a bigger brush and uh, let me start to add a little bit more forms here. So a little bit of karma here. I'm just gonna give her a little bit more form here. Yep, just a little bit here. Okay. And paint outside of her her silhouette is fine I can cover that up with I can cover that up with uh, with her dark hair okay and let's also give her a little bit more form here I mean it's really bright but I still want the form to kind of turn just a little bit All right, so that's okay. It's a face coming out from the white. I think we need some dark here. Let me see. Let me actually start. Let me actually get some get some flesh tone here for the ear. So I put a little masking fluid, but since a few paintings ago, I start to figure out to use masking fluid for a signature. I think it's kind of fun. Instead of painting the signature, I kind of just peel away that. So since I'm using the fluid for the signature, I put few, very, very little masking fluid for this part. So, but let's paint the, the hair. Once the hair is in, you are going to see a huge, huge difference. Okay, so, well, I'm gonna go a little bit crazy on the color. Well, not crazy, just a little bit more variety in color. So I'm gonna mix a nice blue color here. Here, just look how blue that is. I must be crazy. But hey, I, I like some fun colors here and there. And let's mix it dark. Yeah, let me mix it down here since it's already pretty dark down here. Nice warm gray color. I mean, not, not warm, not, nice warm brown, brown color. Okay, this part I needs to be a little bit careful. Okay, I don't want to paint that into the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it a little bit more. So I have a little bit more time to work on it. I can always come back to this later. Okay. Yeah, but for the hair here, okay, I'm actually going to use a smaller brush because I 
want this shape to be as clean as possible here. I don't want this to mix up with the face at all. I'll add a little bit of red just to warm things up a little bit more. Okay, this is quite a dry mixture here. Okay, well, but let me. Okay, a little bit darker down up there. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna use water and soften that part. But you can already see once I start putting the hair, like the the portion now still has now have some weight to it. little bit careful but not too careful okay I'm not the type of person that I'll paint every single hair string that will be completely madness okay I'm gonna add a little bit of neutral tint okay. now there are people taught that you should never use black and uh, I was one of those people when I was in art school like the black wasn't part of the palette for some reason like people really resist using it now I don't really care that much anymore I just think if it works it works so neutral tint is pretty much like black but it's not it's not very dirty but it goes pretty dark but it's not very dirty so I can just a really easy fast way to darken the color here okay I'm going to just yeah just gonna lose this switch I will have that fade into the background. Okay. Hair is a fun thing to paint, but also very stressful. I, I need to leave some highlight out. So dark hair merge into the dark shirt. So there's going to be a lot of black here. That's why I fresh grease some some uh, neutral tint. They're like straight out of tube neutral tint. Okay. I have a little bit of masking fluid here, so I will try to. So I try not to bog down too much on that. Oops. Let me see if I can light this part up a little bit. Ah. Okay. Well, I'll just leave it as is. It will dry a lot lighter anyways. So. Yeah, just get rid of that edge. <clears throat> okay, let me let me start painting that side. All right, so some dark, nice dark. I'm gonna try to keep it as dark as possible for this. I'll add a little bit of red though. I want this to be warm. Okay, so nice dark paint. And very carefully, I'm just going to. Okay, 
Okay, not living my brush. Let me just okay get that shape in. Get that nice dark shape in. Also some dark here, All right? With that, the head shape just sort of pops. Okay, I'll use a little bit of dry brushing here to get some of those fuzzy hair come out. A little bit of water, I'm just gonna soften this. Fade that into the distance. I'll bring this down a little bit. Now, now we got this nice cast shadow here. I'm gonna put it in now. This cast shadow is casting by the hair here. Okay, so light coming down from the above and the hair is casting some shadows onto the face. So I'm gonna gently guide across the face like that. So the shadow was really close to the hair, but as the hair goes away from her face, we're gonna have the shadow Looking apart here. Now it wouldn't hurt if I add a little bit of blue to it. A little bit of cool here. Darker here. And just soften that edge. That's dried enough. Uh, still a little bit damp, but I think I can work with that. Okay, let's make the hair a little bit thicker. dry brush go down like that see that little texture says hair it's good enough for me now I think I still want to drop some of those blue back okay darker color still we have a little bit of Cast shadow here, casting from the hair. I'll bring that dark back up. Treat the hair like one single group, okay? We got one like plane kind of going out like that, so let's do that. Okay, this is why I cannot paint realistic because I once I start to look into the detail of the, the, the reference my my eyes start to get dizzy. I'm just realistic painting that takes forever to paint is just not for me. I'm trying to because I'll look into all the details and that doesn't work well for me. 
Okay, let me add a little bit of red there. I want to the, have some... Some nice warm color here. Okay, let me soften some of the edge. Dark blue. You guys doing okay? Still watching? Or fall asleep? <laughs> Alright. Okay. <clears throat> Let me soften this a little bit so it kind of has a soft transition into the neck here. So her neck feels round. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Nice transition from the dark to light. Okay. I'm gonna deepen that. Painting a portrait is really different from from the scenery to me because for the portrait I, you know, I got I got to kind of go in there and really define all the forms and the, and a little transition of the value and forms and even though I don't paint super detail. I still need to put in a lot more care than like a big scale scenery where I just pretty much capture the atmosphere and the depths and that'll be it. For portrait I have a lot more to deal with. Which is also fun. I like to alternate between the two subjects because um sometimes I do enjoy painting things a little bit you know, with a little bit more care, a little bit more sophistication. Yep, it'll all be recorded on YouTube, so don't worry. You're not going to miss out on that. Alright, I think this for the hair is pretty good now. Let's work on this nice, beautiful hair down here. I think it's already been an hour, so maybe I'll do 15 more minutes and we'll see how we end up. Like I said, I'm probably not able to finish up the whole painting, but I get the majority of it done for sure. Okay, this is pretty black. Let me add a little bit of color to give it a little bit more tone to it. But like just by looking at it, like soon as I start to put the hair in, everything just kind of come together. The face light up dramatically.
Well, as long as it, yeah, thanks. Ting T, uh, I think as long as it's kind of recognizable that I'm, you know, I'm painting her, I think that'll be fine. I mean, like I said, I, you know, I'm not a very detail-oriented painter. So I'm not able to do the detail too well. Okay, I think. Time to darken this. Sort of merge the shadow of the hair here. End of the form here, but the shadow here, just a little bit of hints of form so the neck doesn't feel like it's a flat plane, that's all. Have you ever tried painting with coffee? No, I drink them. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. I, mean, I like coffee a lot, so like, I ne but I never thought of using it as a painting medium. I, I just drink them. <laughs> and I wasn't a coffee person before I moved to Seattle, go figure, because Seattle has some of the most amazing coffee here. Um, yeah. I mean, when I was still in California, I mean, I'm more of a bubble tea person. I mean, I still am, but Seattle got some wonderful coffees, so I just kind of got into it. All right. This nose, let me get that masking fluid out. Actually, I can barely see it because the face is really, really bright. <clears throat> I might need to come back and add some more dark here and there because watercolor does dry a lot does dry a lot um, lighter so I probably need to do that so all right so let me do this let me start to paint her so let me start to paint her shirt Nice and clean. Will you leave a stain for sure? Oh, whoops, I forgot this is still wet. No. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Panic is not a good thing to have when you're painting watercolor. Do your best not to paint it. Panic. Nice and dark. Oh, look at this. Okay. I am being too gentle. I'm just gonna use a bigger brush. Okay, so I just found out there's a little bit of hair light here. Let me see if I can get that in there later. Yeah, see, like this part, it'll be a lot easier if I'm painting in oil. Because oils are opaque. Like, see how dark I go is still very transparent looking. It's okay, we'll just, we'll just live with it. Okay, 
this part. I almost forgot. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give a little bit of the hair color here. Lighten it up a little bit. And get that dark in while it is still wet. I think this will do well here like that. So it feel like this soft semi-transparent hair coming in here. Yep, I think that works. My years of study in watercolor pays off now that I know its property. Actually, not like years, <laughs> a couple years, a few years. But look at that, that beautiful transition. Uh, that's what I love about watercolor. That's what I love about watercolor so much. It's that beautiful transparent quality. All right. All right, I'm just going to have it face off down here into the edge. Now you can look at my signature here. I signed it with masking fluid. So I don't need to come back with, with squash and everything. Things like most of the stuff here is, are going to be very dark. I saw it would be a nice way to, to do my signature, I think. Uh, got some. Okay, so for the background, I'm just going to grab whatever color here. Make it a neutral gray, uh, maybe a little bit cooler for here. Just okay. Oh, I like this music. It's really cheerful. Okay, let me carefully Okay, here's one place that you can fix the silhouette the shape of the face so I think I'm mostly happy with the shape of the face. I'm not going to change too much, but Carefully not to paint into the shape. Don't mess up the silhouette here. And there we go. Mm -hmm. Ah, just whatever. I hate doing big, huge wash like that. Uh, It's a lot lighter on top, so I'll just dirty water for now. Just, I just want to get the coverage in. Yeah, I rarely paint background full like this. I usually just kind of... I usually just kind of leave it... Um, leave, leave some of the stuff white, but I, for this one, I do think we want some nice dark background I think yeah I think and I don't know a little hint of something back there yeah she's in a room and uh, I don't think we're gonna paint 
or every scene, but I think I can, can give it a little bit of a hint of that. <laughs> I think this is mostly it. I mean, I probably need to go back in and really darken this. And here's the thing, look at like, this is not a good sign, okay, I'm having like this, this wet area seeping to the damp area, so what I usually do is just what you want to wet, I'll just wet it, re-wet the whole thing. So that it's not going to leave a nice weird looking edge. Squeeze out moisture and let's see if I can bring some of the light back here. Squeeze out some more, a little bit more. And here just me soften this edge. Back to this. I'm using quite a bit of neutral tint for this painting. All right, a little bit of water. I'm just gonna soften that. <laughs> All right. How much time is that there? I don't know how long it has been, but I think I'm gonna call it a day very, very soon. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the fluid here. And this little... Yeah, not as good as I thought it will be. That was meant for like a highlight of the hair, but I mean, it definitely gave me a little bit of highlight, but it's, it's kind of odd. So I'm gonna paint back in here like that. I might still need to do a little bit of gouache. Okay, I'm gonna do one last thing before I call it a day with you guys. That is, I need to really go in and darken this. Which is the whole point of this painting is to try to get that contrast in. So nice warm dark color. And I will <laughs> the masking fluid peel. Alright, so I will do this. Okay, nice and dark. I'm actually gonna try to merge that with some of the cast shadow here. 
All right. So, and I come back here with some clean water. Do that before it is dry. Okay, you don't want a weird, a hard shape here. Okay, a little bit cleaner water. Okay, pick up some of the paint here. Okay, now it's nice and dark. of her cute necklace here uh, make it a little bit redder just a little touches so I don't even need to bother that much Let me see if I can move the camera so you guys can see it in a better angle here. Oops, it's weirdly tilted. How's that looking? And you're still a little bit of angle, so... Yeah, this is more like... What I'm looking at right now. Thank you, VVH. <laughs> I don't know how to say your name, so I'm just gonna say it like that. So I'll probably go in and start to dark, still try to darken some of the areas. I mean, I like most part of it. There's a little weird edges here as fine as watercolor. I mean, I can't expect to have super smooth wash. Um, yeah, like oil and stuff, but I'll probably go back in and darken some of these, like really deepen this, this dark here and yeah, and that's pretty much it. I think the, the overall the face turns out turns out fine. And oops, sorry, I just hit my second camera. So, yeah, this is the last weekend before anybody enrolled the course. So, I, I'm not going to do much of a portrait demos in the course. Mostly going to be sceneries. But this is the general setup. We got. Uh, I can't remove it yet because I still want to do. Because still, I still want to to repaint some of this. So I'll 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 remove it and show you the finish in the close group for sure. Um, but anyways, yeah, the the course. This is pretty much the setup. I just have one camera here showing the painting. What I'm doing. I can zoom it in so you can see it in detail. And then I have a camera for the palette here. Uh, so you guys can see what color I'm mixing. And I usually have a reference up there or something. So it's usually the layout so you can see everything. So I spend quite a bit of time trying to get this set up. So hopefully this is a nice setup for you guys. I made her face a little bit wider. But I think it's fine because 
he she probably take this photo with a phone. The phone camera is usually distorted. So, all right. Anybody has any questions before I sign off? Come back in with a little bit of wash here. Yeah, let's see. Let me know if you have any question before I sign off and uh I know it's very late there for Oh sorry. I might skip it. What do you suggest for beginning to go with watercolor table or tube? Uh, this. Well, I have another. I have another YouTube video that goes over my my setup. The paint I use is mostly Daniel Smith, so I got my. Yeah, so you know that's the the paint I'm using is mostly Daniel Smith. Let me see if it can come into focus. Yeah, and lately, lately I've been buying some paint from from Mission Mission Gold. It's very intense. That's why I like it for some of the colors. In terms of a table, this is just like an old table that I that I have, and I'm using like old French easel. That was used to be a. Uh, for my oil. Okay, it's like a old French easel with drawers and stuff, and because I paint tilted, so I I have this easel kind of set up like that with a board here, so I can so I can paint tilted. Yeah, but everybody have different preferences. I think as long as you're comfortable, and and for the paint, try I'll say try not to use student grade. Try to use good quality paint because like the intensity, you want good intense uh, painting. You want good intense paint. You don't want to use student grade paint, which is diluted quite a bit. So that's pretty much it. All right. Okay, so I will try to wrap it up on my own and I will share the final painting on Instagram and uh, if you are in the workshop group I will be sharing my painting there it was a nice painting it's a nice session and I'll see you guys again very very soon bye